Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to part three on the 4CX250B amplifier build. I touched on uh, power supplies yesterday. I'm going to continue that on today. This is the basic schematic of a tetrode amp. And the only thing that isn't shown on this paper is the key in circuit, bias, the screen supply, and the plate voltage supply. We've covered bias and started on the screen supply on the last video. And we'll continue on the screen supply on this one. Uh, try my effort here is to give a wide of a view of an idea of the different ways that you can come up with the screen voltage and uh, in some cases bias voltage. It depends on what transformers you have. Uh, you're not limited to uh, just a few options. You got a lot of options and I'm, we'll try to convey that uh, this today. Okay, this is the main schematic, uh, like I said, of just the basic tetrode amp itself. And this is the amplifier we're going to build. That's the complete schematic, key and circuit, bias supply, screen supply, filament, and high voltage. All right there. That's, that's it. <clears throat> okay, we'll get moving on here. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, the video I was talking about, center tap and different ways you can use it with the same transformer. Uh, in the instance in the amplifier we're talking about, I used just a center tap transformer, but I used it with, it's still called a full wave bridge, but it's using the center tap as ground. So you only get half the voltage out of the transformer because you're only using each half on opposite halves of the 60 cycle. So the, and you only need two diodes with that setup. But again, you're not getting the full 700 volts that you could get out of that transformer. You're only getting the 388.85 or just a little over 388 volts. Another way to do that, if you are going to, and I'll talk about this in a minute, is if you used a full wave bridge, get that where the camera can see it. If you use a full wave bridge, in other words, four diodes, and you can then free up that tap from being grounded, that center tap is now going to give you your 388 volts that you want for your screen voltage and the transformer the power supply now is going to supply 770 almost 778 volts and you'll see in a second that can become part of your high voltage that you need for the plate of the tube now before I get to that I'll, I'll show one more example here of how you can hook transformers together all right, here's an option. This is simple. Uh, these are two 120 volt primary, 24 volt secondary transformers. One of them at least needs to have a center tap. Uh, if you want to make use of the fact that from since one side of this transformer, these two are back to back is how they're hooked up. So you got 120 volts coming in here. That's your line voltage. It drops that down to 24 volts. Then you have another 24 volt transformer connected with its 24 volt winding to the first one. And now you have an isolated 120 volt here that we can add or gain voltage. I'll explain that in a second. But one side of this 24 volt transformer can be grounded. The center tap can give you 12 volts if you don't happen to have another transformer. But like I say, at least one of these 24 volt transformers needs to have a center tap and that can give you your 12 volts uh, for your tube filaments. Like as if you was want to run two 4CX250Bs, they're 6 volts a piece. You could just run the filaments in series and make use of the 12 volt. 
Okay, <clears throat> now how this circuit works here is this also, with these two transformers, we're not going to use this to give us our high voltage. Uh, we're not going to require that much current from these two little transformers. Screen current on the 4CX250B is only in the neighborhood of 15, maybe 20 mils. And so we can handle that. Bias is only 10 mils or so. And uh, this will give you 68 volts of bias. You have a voltage doubler on this transformer. The voltage doubler gives you uh, double your, uh, let's say, 339 volts is what, yeah, from 120 volts in. And you take and double this voltage, and it gives you 68 volts from 24. You can also use that 24 volts straight, halfway rectified and stack it on top of your, or under, actually underneath your other power supply and that'll give you a total voltage of 373 volts which is just right in there for your screen voltage. So you can do that with just two little transformers, real easy. And I see I'm gonna have to, I'm probably gonna have to change batteries here. I, I'm getting a blinking light on my camera so we'll see how far we can go. Um, the other option that I had talked about is about using a couple transformers from a company called Antec. This suggestion was given to me by one of my followers and I looked at their catalog and I come up with two that would probably work. The AS3T275 and an AS4T475 and these are the way the transformers are wired up. The first one is going to give you bias and your key and voltage. And the way you hook it up with part of the second transformer, you can get your 6 volt filament and one of those filament windings is used to gain your 24 volts that you need for bias. So out of that <clears throat> you'll get 53.4 vo uh, volts of bias negative and you'll come out with 26.7 volts positive and that's purely fine to run that with like 24 volt relays. They can handle that no problem. And that same two transformers then when you hook the high voltage parts of them up you come up with this. The first transformer gives you 777 volts on its uh, secondaries and then you stack that on the second transformers negative and you get a total of 2120, 2120 volts. So there with just two transformers you've got everything you need for bias, filament, screen, and high voltage. Just a thought. If you want to go that route that's probably your simplest easiest combination of two transformers that'll give you everything. And I think the price I seen on these, the the big transformer was $65 and I think the little transformer was somewhere 50 maybe. Uh, I'm not sure what I saw. But um, and these schematics I have them uh, ready to uh, email. So if you want these just send me an email and I can send you these schematics. Just ask for the 4CX250B schematic sets. I've got probably 10-15 schematics in there now that are ready to send out. So before my camera dies here, we'll make this quick. There's my email address if you have any questions. Send me an email and I'll try to explain everything and then I, if you want the schematics just make a note of that. Let me know and ask for the 4CX250B schematic sets. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you in part four of building the 4CX250B amp.